This video is intended to be a chronological guide to all events in the current Warframe lore. This includes many current events in the system. This does not include currently playable quests, as they clash with the progression order established by prior events. Instead, the list is intended to serve as a way to learn about the events that have shaped the system up to its current state. The placements of events may not be exact, but should be close enough to give a general progression of the timeline. Because of its chronological nature, there are many spoilers throughout the guide, so if you have not completed any quests in Warframe, you have been warned. The story begins when humanity learns of the Void and its properties. Through this knowledge, technology advances at a rapid rate until it becomes what is now known as the Orokin Empire. The Empire is ruled by its seven emperors, omniscient beings shrouded in mystery, hermetic and isolated. Their will is carried out by the Congress of Executors. Most of the solar system is terraformed, and much of empty space is populated with star-worthy tower vessels and ships. The Orokin Empire exists throughout the entirety of the solar system, existing at an elevated position of pride and honor, with life stretching into centuries and technology at an unparalleled state. But in truth, the Orokin Empire is failing, and the Council of Executors hands out harsh punishment as the final say in the system's law. Resources in space are dwindling, from a combination of overpopulation and excessive scientific experimentation on the Earth with artificial technocyte life forms. Elite scholars, known as Archimedians, are enlisted to find a solution called the Plan to the Crisis. One such project, the Crewman Project, is deemed a failure, and the Archimedian behind it is sentenced to death. Another project is developed by the Archimedian Parentol, which involves sending small self-replicating machines to the Tau system to terraform it for the Orokin's eventual arrival. Initially, the project is rejected due to such machines violating the seven principles outlined by the Orokin. But, after some resistance from the Council of Executors and Executor Ballas, the plan is approved, with fears being alleviated by Executor Tavol and the existence of the Flaw, which makes Void Energies poison to these synthetic creatures. After the project completes, the Zaraman 10 is sent on an expedition to colonize Tau. Against protocol, children are also on board the vessel. The Void jump from Saturn to the Outer Terminus fails, stranding the ship in uncharted Void space. The adults on board the vessel are driven mad by the exposure to the Void, and they roam the ship sabotaging it and slaughtering others at will. The children, however, are unaffected. They band together and defend themselves against the adults, some opting to hunt them first. One child, Rel, is outcast due to his autism, and he roams the ship alone, developing an acute sensitivity to the Void and gains a unique understanding of its properties. For some time, the Zaramon drifts in the Void, and it is presumed lost. One day, the Zaramon reappears from the Void. The children on board have been warped by the Void and develop volatile powers. The investigator, Kayleen, violates quarantine on the ship and is scarred horribly by a child who cannot control their powers. All of the recovered children from the Zaramon have difficulty controlling their powers, and the Orokin are fearful of them, wishing to destroy them. An Archimedean by the name of Margulis shows mercy to the children, loving them unconditionally and yearns to help ease their pain. In the process, she is blinded by the children's rampant power, but persists in her efforts. Margulis develops the somatic pods, devices that allow the children to be placed in a therapeutic-induced sleep and dulls their sensitivity to the void. Through this process, the children's memories of their time on the Zaramon are suppressed, and their ability to restrain their power grows. The terraforming machines originally sent to Tau return to the origin system for unknown reasons, the flaw failing to keep them away. These creatures, now known as the Sentients, are instead left barren and unable to reproduce by the journey, and begin to attack the Orokin in revenge. This marks the beginning of the Old War. The Old War is a one-sided battle in the Sentients' favor, as Orokin high technology is assimilated and resisted. Further, the Sentients are able to withstand death itself due to them somehow acquiring Oro. However, an early attack on an asteroid mining facility near the Outer Terminus leads to the discovery of the Sentient's weakness to archaic weaponry. The Grenier slave to inadvertently discover this is used for future cloning batches, and Grenier soldiers are utilized as well as the standard DAC soldiers to support the wartime efforts. Due to the Sentient's nature at resisting standard weaponry, other avenues of combat are explored, one being the Technocyte Super Soldier experimentation. The Technocyte project fails, as the Golems are uncontrollable, but it is discovered that the children of the Zaramun can interface with the Golems through the somatic link in a process called Transference. 
The Archimedean Sylvanus, tasked by the Orokin to recover the Earth from the Technocyte poison, is recruited by Margulis to assist with the Zaraman children and transference therapy. Sylvanus and Margulis are drafted to the Warframe Development Project and are tasked with creating new forms of destruction for the Zaraman children to wield. This task causes Sylvanus immense grief and she plots to betray the Orokin. The Orokin continue to pressure Margulis to abandon the children and turn them into weapons of war, and in her rage, she denounces the Orokin. For her crimes of apostasy, Margulis is put to death by the Executors, one of which is her lover, Ballas. The Transference Project leads to a turn in the wartime efforts, and the Sentient forces are turned back. The Zaraman children, now called Tenno, are hailed as saviors. The Tenno found the great schools of Neramon, Zenerik, Madurai, Vazarin, and Unairu. It is uncertain what the schools of Penyaga and Konexi were for. In an attempt to profit off the salvage of war, scattered mercantile guilds and smugglers join together in a cultish religion worshipping prophet called the Corpus. The cult is denounced by the Seven and is deemed an enemy of the Empire. Sylvanus, experimenting with artificial transference, abandons the Orokin and flees to Earth. Using her apothics and custom somatics, she attempts to link with a terraforming forest and bring it under her control. This process rends her mind from her body, and leaves her mind stranded within the forest itself. Meanwhile, Rel, having survived his experience on the Zaraman 10 plots in secret to combat an entity within the Void he refers to as the Man in the Wall. Rel believes this entity is an embodiment of the Void itself, a timeless, uncaring, all-seeing consciousness that watches our dimension from beyond. Another Tenno, experimenting with the Void, attempts to manipulate the fold of the Void and standard dimensions at will via an in-between space called the Rift, and is destroyed in the process. A mercenary soldier by the name of Orden Karis is hailed by the Orokin for the genocides he has committed in their name, and they award him the honor of an absolution ceremony. Orden, wrought with grief for the horrors he has committed, plots a suicide attack to kill them with concealed bone plugs in his neck and atone for his sins. However, the Orokin elite were anticipating this and laugh at his attempts to destroy the immortal. As punishment for his transgressions, his mind is converted into a digital being known as a Cephalon and is placed into an orbiter compartment as an aid to the Tenno operator. The memories of his old life have been wiped clean by the Orokin and Ballas, and he becomes Cephalon Ortis. The Archimedean Suda begins to suffer memory loss due to her rapidly extended lifespan. In an effort to combat this, she sacrifices her physical form and becomes a Cephalon. Orokin elite harvest children from Martian colonies for use in their continuity, a process in which they transfer their mind into the bodies of others. A Tenno designated to oversee this process rebels and becomes a savior to the colonies known as Inaros. In an attempt to regain control of the war, the Sendians devise a plan to have Nata, daughter of Hunhao, infiltrate the hierarchy and destroy the Empire and the Tenno from within. Though she succeeds in infiltrating the hierarchy, she learns of Margulis and her actions, her own sorrow at becoming barren from crossing the gap between Tao and the Origin system drives Nata to become the Lotus, taking on Margulis's appearance and mannerisms. The original Tenno controlling the Mirage Warframe is defeated in battle by the Sentience, and her Oro is consumed, killing her permanently. As the war progresses, Ortis begins to see fragments of his old self resurface in his mind, but he stifles them to protect the Operator. A Sentient attack on an Orokin tower on Earth is repelled, and the Sentient's remains are kept dormant by an Orokin technology that cages the remains within. This land later becomes known as the Plains of Eidolon. At some point around this time, the Twin Queens are born to an Orokin Elder. They are initially sentenced to death for their twinship, but are spared by their father. The Sentients initiate a false retreat, and Hunhao allows himself to be destroyed above the seas of Uranus. The Orokin believe the war to be over. In their glory, the Orokin Emperors descend from their thrones for the Tenno Absolution Ceremony at the Terminus. The Tenno, however, were plotting a coup and slaughter the Emperors. The first phase of Hunhao's plan is complete. A low guardian, present at the slaughter, vows revenge against the Tenno for their actions, and later becomes the entity we know as the Stalker. Many Tenno, racked with guilt, willingly enter cryosleep to purge their memories. Many others stay behind. The Lotus betrays Hunhao, sparing the Tenno and failing to initiate the second phase of the sequence which would revive Hunhao for a surprise assault. Hunhao remains dormant at the bottom of the sea. 
The Orokin Empire is in disarray with the loss of their leaders, and chaos plagues this system. In an attempt to restore order, the remains of the Congress of Executors tried to reform. At around this time, the event known as the Great Plague begins to spiral out of control. Rel, having formed a cult of believers later known as the Red Veil, rejects his physical form and locks himself in a transference loop within his Warframe. Through this process, Rel restrains the man in the wall within himself. He orders his followers to chain his Warframe and prevent either him or the man in the wall from escaping, locking them in an endless mental struggle. Dax Menz and Lorist Ontella search the city of New Uxmal for Ontella's sister, but the attempt fails when they find that she has been assimilated by the Technosite. Executor Avantus and Sectaris Bilsa flee an infested tower, but Avantus is murdered by the Grenier Vatok and Bilsa is captured to pilot for them, as Bilsa possesses the genetic privilege to operate Orokin technology. The Lotus reveals her immense power and hides the moon itself in the void in an attempt to protect the Tenno. The Grenier forces begin to amass power in their rebellion in the event known as the Uprising, and the remains of the Empire fight to contain it. Surviving leadership is dwindling, and the technology of the system falls into disrepair. The solar railway system is shattered, and much of the infrastructure is rendered unusable due to genetic locks placed by the Orokin elite. Olares attempts to use Bilsa's genetic information to operate the Orokin technology left scattered around the system, but is slaughtered by Vatok in an ambush. It is revealed that Bilsa has switched sides and is now working with the Grenier. The Twin Queens, now warriors of the Orokin, become legends to the Grenier for their intense understanding of each other and earn the admiration of the Grenier. The Twin Queens betray the Empire and become the matriarchs for the Grenier Uprising, leading raids on the remaining Orokin colonies. The remains of the Empire scatter in the face of the United Uprising. Many move inwards towards Seoul in an attempt to form new colonies. Scavenging parties roam the system under constant oppression from the Grenier Matriarchy. Ortis, left derelict for ages by his operator, begins to go mad and his original personality resurfaces. In an effort to combat this, he attempts suicide, but instead fractures his mind into fragments and scatters them, resolute in his plan to await the operator's eventual return. The infestation slows and eventually all but vanishes from the origin system, existing only in scattered pockets beyond the outer terminus in the dark sectors. The Twin Queens prolong their lifespans through the use of continuity. However, their pool of available bodies is mostly Grenier, so they are forced to transfer through bodies often. The Grenier Matriarchy is established as the dominating force of the Origin system, and the Corpus Conglomerate controls much of the commerce. An uneasy balance is struck between the two, and those unaligned with either struggle to eke out a place within the system. Barrow Kitir is born to a simple family on a Martian colony. However, as the Grenier begin their attempts to expand their reach, they slaughter Barrow Kitir's family and leave him mentally scarred, causing him to repress most of his childhood memories. The Myconians, a group of colonists using ancient knowledge from the Orokin era, begin to cultivate Technocyte by choosing a martyr known as the Triuna, which grants immunity to the infestation, and use this arcane skill to barter with the other factions. Similarly, the Ostrons form a colony on Earth near the Plains of Eidolon. Their lack of fear towards the Orokin Reliquary allows them to harvest one of the last living towers in the system and sell the byproducts to others for a fee. A mysterious individual known as Olemidai begins to craft statuettes containing information about the Twin Queens and scatters them throughout the system. The Lotus begins to gather the scattered cryopods across the system to restore the Tenno Order and prevent them from falling into enemy hands. The Twin Queens enact the Tenno Execution Program led by Admiral Vor in an attempt to cull the Tenno Resurgence. Darvo, a highborn corpus and son of Frode Beck, renounces his position on the corpus board and goes rogue. Clem, a Grenier with a birth defect that interferes with his loyalty gene, also goes rogue and evades the Grenier. Dr. Tengus, a Grenier scientist, discovers strains of the Technocyte virus and experiments with them in an attempt to further Grenier's strength. Vor, becoming obsessed with the Tenno and their powers, begins to study the Tenno rather than execute them. This disobedience angers the Queens, and he is demoted to the rank of Captain. In a rage, Vor goes to Earth and kills his replacement Boral. Afterwards, he attempts to salvage the recently discovered Cryopod on Earth and awakens the player. Vor is killed by the player, but is resurrected by an Orokin artifact in his possession known as the Yanis Key. Believing himself to be blessed by the Void, he travels to the Void itself and becomes a denizen there. 
The technocyte experiments by Dr. Tengus spiral out of control, and the infestation surges throughout the system once more. The corpus begin to experiment with Orokin technology and develop fusion MOAs to augment their forces. The Grenier develop surveillance systems to aid in preventing Tenno incursions. The Grenier and Corpus tensions begin to increase, spurred on by direct antagonization from the Corpus head of Grenier relations, Alid V. The Grenier discover a massive stockpile of Corpus resources and mount a full-scale Fomorian assault. The assault is repelled by the Tenno, and in the process it is discovered that the Corpus hold information about hidden Grenier settlements on Phobos. To hide this information, the Corpus risk traveling through void storms, but the Tenno prove resilient and secure it in spite of their attempts to flee. With the Tenno discovery of their settlements on Phobos, and Alid V violating the Queen's contract and hoarding Tenno cryopods for himself, the Grenier Sargus Rook declares all-out war against the Corpus. Their war revolves around Mars and is known as the Gradivus Dilemma. Both sides attempt to enlist Tenno mercenaries to aid in their cause. Despite their bribery, the Corpus are defeated and Mars is claimed by the Grenier. Alid V flees with his hoarded cryopods to Jupiter and attempts to evade both the Tenno seeking to reclaim the pods and the Corpus board seeking to collect on the debts Alid incurred in the Gradivus Dilemma. Alid attempts to earn favor from the board once more by using the pods on a Zanuka project that will revolutionize Corpus proxy development. Frode Beck, once mentored by Alid, is fearful to lose his potential position as Corpus Board CEO and agrees to help the Tenno find Alid and stop him from completing his project. The Tenno fail to stop Alid from dissecting and repurposing the Tenno in cryosleep, but manage to destroy the Zanuka prototype and kill Alid V. Darvo, having stolen a cache of weapons from the Stalker, enlists the Tenno in warding him off. Meanwhile, the Grenier led by Counselor Ve Heck, having struggled for decades to conquer Earth's hyper-aggressive forests, plot to poison the Earth itself with Heck's Cicero toxin and kill large swaths of the planet's flora in one fell swoop. Heck's plot is foiled by the Tenno and he flees to Ceres to recover. The Corpus, after attacking a small independent research facility near Eris, discover the process to recreate an Orokin era alloy called Oxium that is lighter than air but extremely resilient. They utilize this alloy to augment their Osprey drones and bolster their proxy forces. Darvo is then captured by the Corpus at the behest of his father, Frode Beck. Frode intends to bring him back into the fold and groom him for a position on the board once more. However, Darvo is rescued by the Tenno before he can be brought back to Frode. Counselor Vehek, having fled to Ceres, begins his plan to redevelop the Fomorian fleet and conquer the Origin system in the name of the Queens with overwhelming force. The Tenno manage to destroy most of the Fomorian power cores and greatly slow the development of the fleet. Ergo Glast, a pupil of Frodebeck, develops the Animo learning processors with the intention to use its rapid learning to alleviate much of the system's hardships. However, he is disgusted by the Corpus and their willingness to profit off of suffering and leaves the cult to form the Perrin sequence. The Red Veil becomes a target of both the Grenier and the Corpus and their members are systematically captured throughout the system. Cantus, a member of the Red Veil, reaches out to the Tenno for assistance in rescuing the captured members. The Lotus discovers numerous Corpus ships attempting to fly undetected outside of the normal shipping lanes and sends the Tenno to investigate. The Tenno discover that the ships are secret developments by Alid V, who survived the encounter on Jupiter. It is discovered that Alid is using these ships as a method to experiment with Technocyte, ignoring the Corpus doctrine that forbids experimentation with infested biotech. Alid continues his experimentation and develops hives which function as rapid breeding grounds for infestation, attempting to use them to gain a strategic foothold near Eris. Sometime later, Alid completes the new Mutilus strain of Technocyte. This strain is capable of assimilating machinery and technology as well as biological material, and Alid intends to control it to dominate the system. Alid willingly allows himself to be assimilated by the Mutilist infestation, believing that he can control it. However, it proves too much for him, and he goes mad. The Mutilist incursion is halted and contained to Eris, and Alid goes into hiding once more. Jordis, a third frigate ship Cephalon, is consumed by the infestation and used as its mouthpiece. At this point, Vehek's Fomorian fleet is nearing completion, and the Tenno are without a means to stop it. A mysterious individual contacts the Tenno, promising to give them Old War Orokin technology that will aid in stopping the fleet, should the Tenno be willing to assist. Darvo then reveals that the mysterious individual is Barokitir attempting to be mysterious, and ruins his mystique out of personal spite. 
Barrow Key Tier delivers the Orokin information as promised, and it is discovered that it is an old war technology that facilitates single person space combat called Arcwing. However, the technology is corrupted by centuries of decay, and the Tenno attempt to salvage more information. The Grenier also learn of this technology, and in an attempt to stop it, begin to rapidly open torsion beam portals across the system, searching for salvage sites and destroying them before the Tenno can reach them. The Tenno manage to reclaim the technology and also create the relays as massive displays of resistance to the Grenier and the Corpus in the system. Furious at this display of arrogance, Vehek unleashes his Fomorian fleet with the intent to destroy the relays, but is repelled by the Tenno and their new Arcwing technology. Later, a Corpus con man by the name of Nef Anyo begins a large-scale money-making scheme that preys on the superstitious and the uninformed. Claiming himself to be a prophet of prophet and messenger of the void, he collects tithes across the system with his new Bursa proxies, but is stopped by the Tenno in short order. In a moment of lucidity, Alad V reaches out to the Tenno for help in curing himself of the mutilist infestation. This search leads him to Tilregor's cloning labs, which specialize in genetic therapy and experimentation. Nef Anyo once again appears, beseeching the Tenno to destroy the cure and allow Alad to rot, but Alad inevitably finds the cure and frees himself of his infested bonds. The Black Seed, a fringe corpus group that ignores Prophet and is dedicated to undermining the board, raids Alad V's labs and steals infested juggernaut spores, intending to spread them in corpus facilities. With the help of Frode Beck, the group is stopped by the Tenno and pushed into hiding, but some juggernaut spores remain unaccounted for. The Corpus proxies, having been developed to learn and think in direct opposition to old Orokin principles, manage to become unaffected by their limiters and rebel. The Tenno manage to cull their numbers and the Corpus bring them back under control once more. Later, Alad, calling in the favor he earned in the Second Dream, begs the Tenno to protect him from the Stalker's acolytes, sent to kill Alad in retaliation for his actions during the Second Dream. The acolytes are repelled, and Alad escapes into hiding once again. Later, a group of Steel Meridian soldiers is kidnapped by the sadistic Kela de Tame and sentenced to trial by combat called Rathum. Kresatal reaches out to the Tenno, who compete on behalf of the Meridian and defeat the Rathum trials. Infuriated, Kela de Thame challenges the Tenno directly and is killed, sowing seeds of doubt amongst those within the Grenier armies. And that is the current timeline of events in Warframe, not including quests themselves, as their progression is ultimately decided by the players. This timeline will likely change as information becomes more available, but until the time comes when we have all the facts, this is what we know.